I'm here in Mountain View at Google I.O. 2025, and I got to try out the two most exciting things here, which are the brand new devices running on the Android XR platform. As a quick refresher, Android XR is a brand new operating system based on Android, but specifically for headsets. And those would include things like VR headsets or AR glasses. And here at I.O., I had the opportunity to check out two of these devices. The first are the most exciting, which are AR glasses that are a prototype. Now, these were developed in conjunction with Google, Samsung, and Qualcomm. Obviously, Google is making Android, Samsung is making the device itself, and then Qualcomm is making the silicon that powers it all. Now, these are just a prototype, so they don't look exactly how they will when they eventually come to retail, but they do give me a great idea of what to expect when that happens. The first thing that I can tell you about these glasses is that they look great. And when I say that, I mean that the visuals of what I'm seeing look really awesome. Unfortunately, I can't show you what they look like, but I can show you what they showed at the keynote, which you may have seen in the live stream. This looks very much like what I saw during the live demo. I was able to see things like notifications coming through. I was able to see turn-by-turn -turn navigation directions. It was really cool because when I saw it at the keynote, I thought to myself, looking down to see my navigation direction seems counterintuitive. But when I actually had the glasses on, I realized that you didn't need to look fully down. You just needed to sort of tilt your head a little bit down, and then you would see the navigation directions that you would usually see on your phone. Now, speaking of the phone, that's something that is not really explained so well on stage in the, during the keynote, and that is that these glasses do not operate on their own. You have to connect them to a smartphone. So your phone will still have to be somewhere on your body in order for these glasses to do what Google showed they can do on stage. Now, this isn't a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination, but it is something that you definitely need to keep in mind if you were thinking these were going to be more like other AR glasses that we've heard about that do not not need a connected smartphone. With these glasses connected to your phone, you have full access to Gemini, and that is, of course, what Google is really focused on here. Using the glasses, you just quickly tap on the side of the stem, and you can communicate with Gemini, and Gemini can see whatever it is that the glasses see. So in this demo here, what I did is I looked at these paintings and asked questions about them. Who painted them? What kind of paintings are they? That kind of thing, and Gemini responded. I could see text in the visual display of what I'm seeing, and I could also hear Gemini's voice in my ears. Notice I don't have earbuds in, but I have the sound being blasted into my ears from the glasses' stems. This made it incredibly intuitive and easy. I could just imagine myself walking into a museum, seeing a cool piece of art, and just spontaneously asking a question. Who painted this? Or what happened here? Whatever. And hearing back those responses from Gemini directly. Now, just to reiterate, these are a prototype. So I don't know when we're going to see these. I don't know what they're going to be called or how much they're going to cost. But Google clearly is really, really into this concept because, of course, we had Google Glass happening almost 10 years ago now. And now, last year at Google I.O. 2024, Google debuted this whole concept. And now here at 2025, we are actually getting to demo that. So I would guess maybe in the next year or so, we're going to actually hear about these types of products coming to market and you being able to buy them. Unfortunately, how much they're going to cost is a total mystery, but judging from what I tried today, I don't expect them to be cheap. The Android XR glasses are probably the most exciting Android XR device that I saw here at I.O., but I also got to try on Project Muhan for the first time, and that was almost as exciting. Project Muhan, if you don't remember, is a Samsung-created VR headset. It operates the same way that you would expect from a Meta Quest, but it allows for complete gesture controls. So you don't need to have a controller in your hand to be able to control what's going on on the screen. You can just use pinches and swipes and taps and things like that in the air. This is very similar to what we saw on the Apple Vision Pro. However, I think Project Muhan is going to be far more popular than Vision Pro because, well, it's probably going to be a lot less expensive, and also it is going to support all manners of controllers. Google told me that you'll be able to connect other VR controllers to Project Muhan. You'll also be able to connect your standard controllers, like an Xbox controller or a DualSense controller that you already own. So you'll be able to play games using a standard controller with the headset on. The headset was incredibly comfortable. 
Usually when I put on a headset like this, I feel a lot of weight in the front of my face kind of dragging me down, but this was very evenly distributed, making it feel like I could wear it for an hour and not feel any discomfort. It was also crystal clear. I can't show you what I was seeing, unfortunately, but I can describe that the quality of the visuals was astounding. It was in full color, everything looked crisp, and the latency was less than 20 milliseconds, which is basically real life latency. So I could imagine having this on, playing a game in crystal clear quality, and then somebody comes in to say, hey, it's dinner time. I can turn that off and see them perfectly clearly, respond, go back to the game, save my game, whatever it might be. And it's not just games. Once again, Google is all in on Gemini, so Project Muhan has a button specifically dedicated to launching Gemini. And within this, you can do all the Gemini things you would expect, like ask questions about what's going on and all that. But what you can also do is ask Gemini to take you to places. So for example, you could say, I want to travel to Madeira, the island of Madeira outside of Portugal, and it'll just take you there. You'll be able to see a Google Maps layout that you can swipe and tap and move around and get to know whatever area that you want to explore. This will allow people who maybe can't travel or want to just find out about a place before they travel there to really experience what it's like to be there in virtual reality without having to get off their couch. It's going to be a really cool device. Unfortunately, just like with the Android XR glasses prototype, we don't know anything about these things still. We don't know what the real retail name is going to be, we don't know when they're coming out, and we don't know how much it's going to cost. Of course, I did ask Google this again, but they declined to answer. So for now, all we can say is that they're promising they're gonna come out sometime this year, but at this rate, I don't even know if that's going to happen. It's possible that it could be delayed because I feel like we would know by now, but I don't know, we're gonna have to wait and see. But it was still really exciting to give it a shot. And if you are skeptical about what Project Muhan offers, I highly suggest being really, really anticipating these things coming out so you can give them a shot. Android XR is one of the most exciting things Google is developing right now. And getting to experience the two different form factors here at IO really opened my eyes to how interesting and cool Android XR is going to be. I'm still left a little worried about when this is all going to happen. I feel like this is happening very slowly. We found out about Project Astra and Smart Glasses last year. We found out about Project Muhan shortly after. And still here we are in May 2025 and we don't know anything else about when we're actually going to be able to get these. So that's making me a little hesitant, but after experiencing them for myself, I am more excited than ever for what Android XR could mean in the future. But as always, I wanna know what you think Jump down in the comments and let me know what you think about these experiences. And in the meantime, I will see you in the next video.